where we are talking about uh, the promotional tools and lot of other stuffs. Then we have uh, our branch office that is called QST EST that is there in uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, we are managing our businesses for whole group, especially support center for our IT uh, like uh, software and all this. And then micro center engineering where we are dealing with uh, our engineering and that is mainly for surveying a special projects that is going up to like, you know, the 3D modeling, BIM modeling and all, all this kind of stuff. And then we have micro center professional services where we are talking about uh, uh, the Oracle specified skill. Then we have micro center specific skill. All those people are being deputed at different government organizations and different places. So if we talk a little bit about our group, this was uh, initiated in 1983 by our president, Dr. Gulum Bakari, and he is a technocrat having PhD in artificial intelligence and the deceptive technologies basically. And uh, the company is lucky enough to have the direction and the technical deliberation from Dr. Bakari. And the company having five reasons, as I discussed earlier, we have 120 plus employees in Bahrain and all of them are based here. And uh, we have, uh, you know, more than 30% of Bahrainization. We have 200 plus satisfied and delighted customers here in Bahrain. And uh, we have almost 60% of annual customer growth. That is something to cheer about. We have global partnership with Oracle ESRI. And we are basically the sole distributor of ESRI product and services in the kingdom of Bahrain. We are the silver partner to Microsoft. Then we are having Digital Globe, Snappy, Digital Signage, Envision, Sera, And of course, uh, recently we have forayed into solar business. And today we are having a relationship with Jinko Solar and few other companies for inverters and related equipments when it comes to solar energization. So uh, micro center is uh, always, you know, wise and always looking forward to brought the international and global technology to the kingdom so that the people here, especially the organizations who are in technology can benefit out from there. So today, seminar, uh, today presentation and today webinar is, uh, you know, uh, our, our effort in order to understand the importance of, of digital transformation for AEC industry. As we know that, that uh, AEC designers, engineers, and contractors use a set of BIM and CAD tools that is supported by now the cloud technology, where they can have uh, the high level of collaboration and throughout the project delivery from right from the earlier stage of the project design through the constructions and even post construction activities. So these technologies help in creating high quality, high performing building and infrastructure design with conceptual and detailed design tools. So I will not take much time talking about these technology because our expert is here. So I will invite my expert, Mr. Soreen Bolasa to come here and present the importance of digital transformation for AEC industry. Thank you very much. Mr. Soreen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Abu Bashar, and thank you, Micro Center Group, for having me. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the presentation. Um, my name is uh, Soreen Bularka, as mentioned. I'm the technical sales specialist at Autodesk Middle East. Uh, I'm actually based in Dubai um, and just a quick uh, introduction for uh, about my experience. Uh, I'm also a sustainability goal ambassador uh, at Autodesk. I come from a civil and structural engineering background and my role is basically to help companies uh, in the AEC sector to uh, maximize the value of implementing digitization, cloud, which was mentioned before, and automation. I have a, an overall experience of over uh, 16 years uh, in this uh, AEC sector, and I've been with Autodesk uh, more than seven years. 
I've been previously stationed in Singapore for about three years, supporting our biggest accounts in Asia Pacific. And I moved to Dubai in 2018, supporting the Middle East, uh, uh, Africa uh, and Turkey. Um, my focus is on people, processes and technology. Um, and I'm focused on delivering the best in class value engineering services to, uh, to private and governmental organization in Asia, Pacific, Middle East and, and Africa. So that's a quick intro about me. And uh, without any further ado, let's uh, continue with the presentation. So a quick introduction uh, about Autodesk. So for the ones of you that um, it's, uh, don't know too much about our company, uh, from skyscrapers to uh, smart cars, bridges, and to blockbusters, Autodesk customers are creating amazing things every day. Autodesk solutions span countless industries, from architecture to construction to film, empowering innovators in every corner of the planet to combine technologies in ways that were never imagined. And when that happens, a better world can be designed and made for all. A better world starts with the places where we live, work and play. Uh, and at Autodesk, we consider ourselves to be the architecture, engineering and construction industry partner in how we make these places. For AEC, we serve building, we serve water, and we serve the transportation industry. For 40 years, we've been working with the industry to enable it to design and build a better world through better use of data. First, we enable the shift from drafting table to the computer with AutoCAD, which I think most of you are familiar with. Then we optimized beam-based design with Revit. A few years ago, we extended digital uh, design to construction and operation with the Autodesk Construction Cloud, allowing teams to collaborate on shared information in the cloud. Now we are opening up access to software APIs and services on our cloud developer platform called Forge, where we can create fully customized solution, integrating Autodesk software with one of our uh, own and linking data across full design, build and operate uh, life cycles for your projects. With every technological uh, achievement, we've been part of uh, uh, all of them and uh, had clear catalysts uh, that have accelerated them. Most recently, COVID has rapidly expanded cloud adoption faster than, than we expected for the industry. Uh, and it's giving rise to another catalyst uh, driving the next transformation. And these are the owners. And there are all kinds of uh, owners from uh, industrial to commercial, and they all need our industry to do more to help them confront the big issues they are dealing with, like globalization, uh, we have urbanization, uh, we have uh, climate change, uh, all they are asking at that time when budgets uh, are tight and the skilled workforce in the AC is actually shrinking. So there's no doubt it's going to take a massive shift in how the industry works to address these challenges. Owners know data can help address them. Over the past uh, years, uh, COVID shown owners uh, and all of us what happens when a shift in the way we work accelerates. Suddenly, every one of uh, our firms and employees was rooted in uh, digital ways of working. So the cloud went from need to have in the future to must have right now, as uh, more and more people began full-time remote work. Uh, with, uh, while COVID changed how we worked and how we live, it simply accelerated a digital transformation that was already well underway in the industry uh, and a journey that many of, of you are probably already on. A digital transformation look and feels different for every firm, but we like to think of it as a journey shaped by four critical elements. And these are digitize, connect, optimize and evolve. And this will be also the structure of our uh, presentation moving forward. So we will start with the first which is the digitize and the underlining process that, that enables all of these elements is actually BIM or uh, building information modeling. BIM is the process of creating and, and managing information data for a built asset like an office, building, bridge or hospital. It's based on an intelligent model uh, and enabled uh, by a crowd platform and we've been investing in it uh, and, and BIM-enabled technology for a while now. 
BIM allows your teams to combine and recombine technology. It's how you harness data to unleash talent of your teams, unlock insights from all corners of your ecosystem, converge on solution to challenge uh, to uh, to challenges uh, that, that you you encounter. Because despite the uh, advances of the f uh, last few decades, there's no end of problems to be solved. And solving them means addressing the silos uh, and the industry fragmentation that uh, make it innovation more difficult. Solving this will require a digital first mindset and a unified and interoperable platform. Because uh, of our leadership in BIM and, and global reach, Autodesk is, is, a, is in a unique position to, to help your firm, firm get there. Digitize. So let's start the first element of, of digital transformation, which is digitize. Uh, digitize is the first step to embracing BIM processes for digital transformation. And it's all about adopting digital technology and digitally enabled processes for previously analog tasks. As firms do this, they gain familiarity with the potential of new software and apps to create and manage design and construction information for a built asset. Digitization brings a number of benefits, including increased efficiency, streamlined workflows, capacity to hand handle more complex high performance projects. So let's look at how uh, project teams in Atlanta and uh, Chengdu have produced remarkable results by embracing digital workflows. This is, these are some of the first examples and you will see more examples like this to, uh, to, to inspire you from all over the world. Uh, and the first one, as I mentioned, is from Atlanta where Skanska in the US and uh, the Kendra Fund and Georgia Tech have uh, built the new Kendra building for innovated sustainable design. A project doesn't get uh, much more complex than this one. It's built to the rigorous sustainability guidelines or LEED Platinum. Uh, one key project outcome uh, they wanted to achieve was a zero, zero net waste target. So the Kendala building team knew it had to embrace BEAM to ensure careful planning for design construction to achieve upwards of up to 90 or 100% uh, salvaged and recycled materials. The BEAM processes help them uh, help the team not only incorporate these materials into the design, but track them to the duration of the construction, eliminating overall waste. Collaboration in the cloud environment, uh, they used uh, Autodesk um, software like Revit, and they used also Autodesk Construction Cloud to create effective models uh, and to ensure that cost estimates and quantity takeoffs were on track and project stakeholders were kept up to date on the, uh, all of the latest changes. But these aren't only the only processes they digitized. They also used VR uh, uh, to support design reviews, helping the owner visualize the design choices, uh, uh, drones to document their project progress. And thanks to their in innovative use of technology, the team met their net zero waste targets. Another example is in Chengdu in China. Uh, with a 60,000 seat stadium, Chengdu Phoenix Mountain Sports Park would be an ambitious project under any circumstances, but it also boosts a, a large double curved steel frame uh, and a massive open cable dome roof. This roof is the first of its kind in the world. A project like this has many challenges, but with BIM, the team was able to shorten the construction period by 130 days and save more than 14.5 million US dollars. The project started in AutoCAD for preliminary design. Revit provided the in-depth models and the design of the structures, MEP and membrane structure. The team then used Navisworks to integrate multi-disciplines models, check for collision, identify drawing problems uh, or defects, and create efficient scheduling. All of the arc-shaped pipes, steel connections, uh, and membrane structures were completed with detailed designs in Revit and then exported to a factory for uh, production. Once manufactured, the team conducted a digital pre-assembly to verify the construction process and monitor the quality. Uh, as uh, Qin Zhang, BIM director at uh, China Construction, um, commented, BIM is the core of digital construction and it's the only way to achieve 
optimum quality, scheduling, accuracy, and time and cost saving. Now with project information, when project information is digitized, it's easier for architecture, engineering, and construction firms to connect their data to the uh, data, data being created by other members of the project team. This is the next element of digital transformation, and it's all enabled by the cloud. Before the cloud, the traditional method of AAC collaboration involved dozens of uh, designers uh, trading uh, hundreds of emails, files, uh, even paper, and I think uh, you're all familiar with these processes, uh, with uh, different documents with, uh, with stakeholders. Imagine all of the ad uploads and downloads uh, and the real risk of working on the wrong version of a file or, or a hard copy. Uh, this process was fraught with miscommunication and time loss with work being done and redone. So there are many benefits to embracing the cloud, including seamless collaboration across different phases and between different teams across the construction project lifecycle. Manage risks and improve predictability and certainty, the ability to move critical planning and, and build workflows into the cloud. Autodesk portfolio enables BIM in the cloud uh, through our common data environment. It's called Autodesk Docs, which our customer can access through ACC or Autodesk Construction Cloud. Autodesk Construction Cloud connects designers, builders, and owners to each other and to share data to support seamless collaboration between project stakeholders. A great example is one of the world's fastest growing airports, BIAL or BL in Bangalore, India. This project team led by uh, global architectural urban planning and engineering firm SOM is using beam enabled corporation software to manage risk and improve certainty across the design and construction of a new LEED gold terminal. Bio's vision is to reinvent the passenger experience by creating a smarter, futuristic and sustainable airport capable of handling 82 million passenger uh, per year 2030. And the team wanted the terminal to be completed in just two and a half years. So Autodesk worked with the Bile and team to develop a workflow based on their project goals and help them transition to Beam Corporate, uh, Beam, uh, to, to, sorry, to Beam Collaborate, a connected design and planning data platform that's part of the Autodesk construction cloud. Even with uh, members of the team in, in different locations, Bile was able to work together as if they were in the office. Beam Collaborate allowed them to complete over 5,000 drawings in six months. Um, uh, all the disciplines were integrated uh, for collaboration and coordination, and paper documents were completely eliminated. Thanks to Autodesk Construction Cloud, the Bile project is on track with the entire team working in coordination. The COVID-19 crisis has demonstrated the power of the cloud and its importance to the AC industry more dramatically than anything we've experienced before. Take example Arcadis. This uh, uh, global consultancy adopt, adopted to COVID by harnessing cloud collaboration and 3D modeling to provide a resilience water system for the city of Toledo, Ohio. After a toxic algae boom uh, caused the city to lose access to its water supply, it engaged Arcadis to modernize the infrastructure. The timeline was tight and uh, uh, team members were spread out from Ohio to Florida. Arcadis learned uh, on the cloud collaboration and AR to keep everything moving in sync. With cloud-based collaboration, the project massive models along with uh, timelines and workflows were all in one place. So every team member could interact with the data in real time and see updates as they happen. So I'll have to stop for, a, for a one moment to please ask you to go on mute if you don't have any questions for now. We will keep the, the questions at the end just because there's a bit of uh, background noise and it makes also the, the presentation a bit more difficult. So I appreciate if you can, can mute your microphone. Stop now. No problem. There are a lot of questions. Excuse me, is it possible to, to go on mute? Okay. So by eliminating back and forth emails and file downloads, the team 
saved over 1,000 design hours on the project. Then just as the uh, project was wrapping up, COVID hit. So while COVID caused new restriction on uh, crew sizes and disrupted supply ch uh, chains, Arcadis Arcad didn't miss a beat. Workers involved with the uh, uh, finishing work continued to visit the job sites virtually and maintain safe workplaces, reinforcing for Arcadis that cloud collaboration is vital to the future of a resilient, uh, resilient AC industry. Now we're moving to optimize. Okay, which is the, the third step to digitization. As AEC firms become more familiar with the full potential of their technology, they begin to take digital first mindset. So this allows them to optimize their practices in ways that can connect people, workflows, and data. By viewing data as a resource that brings insights to their day-to-day -day decision-making, industry leaders can design with the outcomes in mind from the beginning of the project. Cloud-based project delivery generates uh, and generative design uh, and design for manufacture and assembly, or DFMA, all hold the promise to help design firms improve with uh, win rates and client satisfaction, achieve more predictable results, focus on delivering projects for environmental performance, and reduce overall errors. Take, for example, this project in Singapore, the Kalang Polyclinic and the long-term care facility. The project goal was to create a hybrid of a two healthcare components in a single building, a polyclinic with a wide range of clinical facilities and a long-term care facility that provides resilient care. The design uh, uh, purpose and occupants of the two areas were very different and the project required decision-making from multiple stakeholders. Because the two different uh, uh, uses of the facility detected two different construction processes, where prefabrication could be used much more exclusively in one area than another, the team decided to embrace a DFMA uh, or approach or a design for manufacturing and assembly uh, approach. With DFMA, the design is optimized for prefabrication and it's possible to incorporate manufactured assemblies into the overall workflow. So building a DFMA approach into the BIM process brought a new level of coordination for the team, including shorter review cycles and more visibility via Revit models and an in-depth six-sided view of each room. Prefabrication were, was perfectly suited for a level six to nine due to the regularity of each room's layout and use. In addition, more than 100,000 assets in the project required documentation, such as the type of furniture, its location, and a serial number. The Dynamo and Python scripts were used to automate views of the layout for asset management and stakeholder approvals, saving the team more than 1,000 hours. With this approach, the project saw 25% reduction in construction time and saved over 5,000 hours without sacrificing the quality. Machine learning and AI are two other ways AAC firms can optimize processes. Autodesk has been investing in these capabilities for construction with Autodesk Construction IQ and for uh, design with our recent acquisition of Spacemaker. Autodesk Construction IQ uh, machine learning capability give project teams enhanced data analysis and risk prevention. A typical project has thousands of open issues, hundreds of RFIs and change orders, and num uh, numerous subcontractors working together on any given day. Construction IQ acts like a smart assistant and analyzes the um, a mountain of uh, project data to help teams prioritize the critical high-risk areas so they can act to avoid costly and time-consuming impact downstream during the construction. Machine learning can help designers too. So make Spacemaker helps architects and real estate professionals evaluate site feasibility and development options. For instance, a real estate developer interested in evaluating a plot of land for a new apartment development can use Spacemaker to explore real-time options for rentable area, uh, density of units, daylight, and how many units will have a premium view. Uh, in this example, it's, it's the Eiffel Tower in, in Paris. 
Uh, being able to combine generative design and real-time analysis factors like daylight, noise, density, wind, or sightness allows for the analysis of a wide set of criteria that's critical for early planning decision. So the digital transformation is never over. Um, as firms become uh, more integrated in their practices, they will benefit from the convergence of their beam uh, enabling technology with other systems. In the future, the system will learn more and more from, from one another, share insights, and be able to optimize their performance in real time over time. This type of evolving data connected world centers around, uh, centers around the digital twin, where every system becomes more and more connected and able to feedback operational information to inform the next design. So when we get there, there will be all kinds of benefits to the individual firms, uh, the AEC industry and the communities we serve as well. So benefits are like design and data circularity, uh, innovative business models, including new contract structures, professional in, uh, inspiration from renewed uh, ability to uh, bring bold thinking to complex challenges and major leaps in an environmental and operational performance. What this might look like, let's see. This Japanese global architecture and uh, design first, uh, Takenda Corporation recently uh, collaborated with Mercedes-Benz Japan to design and build EQ House, a prototype structure located in Tokyo. This house demonstrates the possibility of connecting mobility, information, and people seamlessly with AI, IoT, and BIM. This is a learning building, one that can communicate with its inhabitants and learns their likes and dislikes, reacts to the voices and the movements of people, watches over their vehicle, learns from, from their comfort and energy use, and shares information with other devices. Sensors throughout the house uh, meld the information infrastructure with the building space while providing an enormous amount of information. A weather station measures the wind direction and speed, rainfall, atmospheric pressure, and sunlight. AI gathers uh, uh, insights from the data and communicates with the building communicating uh, system to control the house, repeating the process in a continuous feedback loop. Glass walls can be electronically controlled to change transparency level. On a bright sunny day, they can be made opaque or they can be uh, set uh, uh, to turn transparency only when a person is nearby. Bedroom walls feature dimming films that can adjust the room's brightness depending on the need or time of the day. Light and temperature can be operating, operated by voice. This can also be connected to a smartwatch. Uh, you can just click like if you are satisfied with the uh, lighting uh, or the temperature, prov providing new insights to AI and uh, uh, for the building to serve its occupants even further. In the future, uh, what uh, Takenada is doing won't be a prototype. It will be a business as usual, and more smart buildings and infrastructure will rely on systems connected in real time uh, to digital twins. Autodesk is investing in this area too, and with Autodesk Tandem, we are connecting owners and developers with a digital model that's ready to go for operations, so owners can get most of their physical asset. Whether it's a bridge, factory, building, or any other structure, the data created by the BIM process during design and construction is valuable well beyond the project's official completion. A digital twin allows a project to start digital and stay digital. With a digital twin, uh, that they've received from a, a project team, owners can turn data into business intelligence that can be used for operation and empower better business decision through the life of their project. Insights at the level of a single building are powerful, but imagine the power of digital twin at the scale of a connected infrastructure or a smart city or even entire country. This is one of the reasons Autodesk recently invested in Innovice, 
not only is Innovise a global leader in water infrastructure software, but they are on a world leading producer of digital twins for these systems. Innovise cloud based Info360 platform can convert raw data from SCADA and IoT systems and turn it into an actionable database or a dashboard for analysis and simulation. And it goes without saying that data connected world I've, uh, I've been talking about requires cooperation and openness from the technology community. The examples I've shared with you so far are all of the designers and contractors using Autodesk technology. But no single piece of software can support all of the needs of today's project teams. That's why Autodesk is committed to openness and interoperability between tools to help transfer information and transform these workflows. We're working together with our competitors and our customers to drive standards and improve the flow of data across workflows and processes. We've engaged with organizations such as Open Design Alliance and Building Smart International and the Digital Twin Consortium to help AEC industry meet international collaborative data exchange standards for BIM and Digital Twin. To move from the digitization process to transforming your business and, and the spaces we all live, work and play in, you need access to be able to extend, customize and scale new capabilities through your data. That's why we are investing in Forge developer platform. Floor, Forge API and the services can be combined with the software system you already have to enhance how you work. You can use these APIs to build custom applications, connect workflows and automate processes. And you can easily access all of your design and construction data through Forge regarding, regardless or of where it's created. Over 100 top tier construction partners have already built industry leading application on top of Forge, uh, the new solution that connect project lifecycle and surface data insights. When data is actionable, it's transformational. So let me share with you one last example. For this story, we uh, all go to a, a colder place with a nicer weather we call Norway. Uh, this project is in E39. It, it runs across fjords and through, through mountains to connect Norway's west coast. With five roads, road tunnels and 47 construction, including the new world's largest balanced concrete cantilever bridge, the project is an ambition investment. What's more, the Norwegian Road Authority attached the ambition goal of reducing the project's carbon emissions by 20%. Norconsult is a multidisciplinary consultancy which won the design and build contract in, in 2018, together with the contractor AF Gruppen. With a four-year schedule, it was clear that it was going to have to, uh, to be designed and built in parallel. So Norconsult used Forge and Navisworks to ag aggregate over 800 B models into an intuitive location-based web interface. This enabled the project participants, all 2,000 of them, to collaborate on a rich information model using nothing more than a browser. Not only Norconsult was able to reduce the traditional drawings by 95%, uh, when a change to the design occurs, it is inevit inevitably, uh, and as it inevitably is, almost 70% of the updates would be populated automatically. Leaving Norconsult more time to focus on bigger challenges like how to meet the ambition goal of 20% uh, percent less carbon emission. And for Norconsult, digital transformation is an uh, investment that's helping build a sustainable future. So what I'm showing you today is that AEC companies are transforming how they work with data. As they do this, they are creating new business models and offering new services to their ecosystem, reaping the uh, benefits of digital transformation and uh, innovating around big challenges like sustainability at the same time. So how do you get there? The good news is we have the solutions you need to start or accelerate your own digital transformation journey. At Autodesk, our portfolio supports BIM processes, 
cloud sharing and data automation insights and analytics. It allows you to use uh, rich information uh, you've creating during design and construction, so you can put your data at the center of your projects and easily transform that data into valuable insights. I leave you with this thought. Digital transformation doesn't happen overnight. It's a journey and probably uh, one that you've, you are already on. Uh, and it's opening possibilities that will allow your business to thrive. Autodesk is committed on being on this journey with you. It's why we continue to deliver the best portfolio of BIM-based software uh, products to digitize AEC workflows. It's why we are committed to open standards, integration, and interoperability to connect distributed teams. It's why we are invested in, in an automation and insights to optimize AEC processes. And it's why we are looking beyond design and construction to operation data and material circularity. So your firm can evolve and bring bold thinking to the world's hardest problems. When the right platform, with the right platform at your fingertips and the right partner at your side, you don't have to wait for progress. You can make it. With this, I would like to conclude the presentation. And I think we can uh, open the floor for, for a few questions. Yes. Uh, role of digital ethics. I think uh, I, I would like to understand a bit more about uh, maybe the context of the question. Uh, Mr. Purushottam, you are there. Maybe you can unmute and, you know, ask. Yeah, <clears throat> see. Uh, in this digital transformation era, everybody is, you know, trying to do the piracy or uh, do unethical practices. So what do you think uh, digital ethics role in digital transformation? How do you proceed on this? Yeah, it's a, um, it's a so you interesting might have come question. Across lot of, you, you must have come across a lot of instances where the uh, piracy is happening. Uh, the uh, IT piracy is a open subject. Everybody knows on it, right? The code theft and the practices, pra yes. practices yes. there. Yeah. So how do you, what do you, you know, how, what are the best practices or what are the uh, situations you come across in terms of people following the digital ethics or, you know, uh, are they violating the, yeah, so so maybe I just give a personal uh, opinion about this. It's it's a it, it's a very wide topic, and as you mentioned, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, we we encounter this uh, uh, especially uh, here in the region, but it's also uh, in other regions as well. So it's not it's not uh, it's related necessarily to to a specific region. Um, what I would say, if I, first I would say that uh, you know. Uh, it's 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 illegal to use uh, uh, software without a license. So so that's yeah. that should be the 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 the, the first point of, of the discussion. It's 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 illegal from the, from the law point of view. If you use a cracked software, that's that's something illegal. Now, if that's tolerated, and why you know, we don't have that answer, unfortunately, hopefully. Uh, by you know by by reducing the cost of of these tools probably more users will will see the advantage of actually subscribing to these products and when they see the return of his investment of, of these products probably they will they realize that it's not worth to stay illegal so uh, and it's also related to the prestige of a company and I, you you wouldn't want to do or you would be reluctant to do business with a company that you know that it doesn't have the digital ethics so so it's about prestige it's about you know education educating the the, the people that uh, you know uh, purchasing a license making it legal it also gives you uh, some benefits you have the support you know once you subscribe to a software you you are you become a partner of let's say in, in our case autodesk you, we, we become partners and you have our, or our support and you have a, a lot of benefits uh, like learning how to use the software and, and, and a lot of other benefits so i think that's maybe just a, a quick answer to to that but let's let's see if we have also some other questions so what do you think uh, the uh, even the employees does employees need to practice digital ethics 
For sure. I, I would say it, it has to start from the leadership uh, of a company uh, and it has to be imposed and, and uh, employees have to be educated that it's you know, like a, a, you're teaching a child, you know, if the, the child is doing a bad thing, it's your responsibility as a parent to teach the child. And I, and I give this example because I have two young children at home and I think it's it's valid for, for even for organizations. It starts from the leadership and the leadership has to to reinforce uh, and educate, you know, that it's it's not ethic and it's it's not uh, it's not good to, to to do this kind of practices. And yeah. as I mentioned before, Autodesk can 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 support and and we can have a you can help you if you have this kind of situation in your organization. We can definitely have a discussion and we can help you sort sort out these issues. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Sodin. Thank you. Sodin, if, you, if you Welcome. allow me, uh, this is Aisha. I'm um, a business advisory also for serving a Bahrain country. I just want sure. to add Hi, Aisha, yes. a point Please. regarding um, the complaints. It's regarding the security. So using non-valid software may affect the security information uh, of your information at your company. And we can share with you later uh, why you need to be always compliant with using uh, uh, a Genian software from Autodesk. So this is another point, another very important point to take care about your uh, data security. Uh, just wanted to add about uh, this, yeah. this point about the security. Mm -hmm. Very, very well uh, uh, pointed, uh, Aisha. It's a very good point. You, if you use a cracked software, you don't know who cracked that software, and you don't know what intention that person had when when they did that. So you don't know exactly if your data exactly. is secured or not. So security, yeah, it's it's one of the key uh, key things to consider on, on that. Okay, so let's see if we have another question here. I see another one. Is ACC, ACC is private or a hybrid cloud? Um, and I again I need a bit of more clarity. It's it's ACC. It's a it's a private cloud. Okay, so when you subscribe to ACC, you have your own space. Okay, so you your company has a hub, and it, you have unlimited storage on that hub. Um, and it's it's your own space. It's a pure private space. You can invite collaborators. Uh, they can use their own license. Okay, so you don't have to to give them a license. You you have two options. You can give them one of your license to access the, your your data, or they can use their own license. So we call this bring your own uh, subscription. So it's a capability that we have added in the cloud. So two users. Let's say you have subscription to ACC, they, you can invite them uh, to, 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 to your projects. And of course, there are permission levels. So, you know, if you can give them only view access just to review projects, or you can give them uh, access to upload data. So let's say if they need to submit something, you can give them, you can create a folder in the cloud there, and then they can just uh, have the right to upload documents, uh, but they wouldn't be able to uh, edit those documents. So, so I hope that answers the question. Uh, okay, another one. Cloud collaboration, Collaborate Pro is from Autodesk. Yes, so uh, Autodesk Beam Collaborate Pro. Yes, it's true. It's it's a uh, it's it's a product from Autodesk. Um, it's uh, we can we probably it's good to have a, a separate session. Uh, on that because it's a it's a product that serves a lot of functions. Um, it's it allows users to work in the cloud from anywhere uh, in Revit, uh, but Civil 3D as well and Plan 3D. So there are these three softwares. Uh, but not only that, you can do also automatic clash detection with with the tool. You can do uh, project review. Uh, it supports more than 60 file formats not only from Autodesk file formats, even from competitor file formats. So in a nutshell, you know, you are just a reviewer. You don't need a Revit license to review the project. You can just open it in a web browser environment and then you can you can uh, review it. It's also very well optimized. It's optimized how it's exchanging the data with the cloud. So you are never actually working in the cloud. You are actually working on a cached version of that on your machine. And it's only syncing the delta. So let's say you have a building, you're adding a, a, a window to that building. When you sync the file to the cloud, it will only add that window. So it doesn't put that burden on your network as well. So that's why it's a 
it's a very um, uh, efficient solution in order to connect different uh, organizations. And it's more efficient than using, you know, v uh, VPN or any other kind of systems. Okay, any other? Yeah, Mr. Sorin, um, I, Please, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, I'm Audrey from uh, Microsector. Um, yeah, I'm just uh, watching a few minutes. I mean, there are certain questions that are coming towards on data security. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really interesting question. I mean, from ministries or uh, maybe the colleagues are also asking the same question. Um, but here I would like to um, convey that uh, recent our observation because uh, um, we did some pilot, uh, uh, you know, recently to one of the ministry here on uh, uh, for using BIM 360 platform. So what we did is that um, I really not, uh, much known about in terms of uh, in, in terms of more on data security, but I believe that a little bit of data security in terms of we we have created some uh, you know like uh, Revit models and some automated drawings, and we use it first, and as well as we also um, uploaded the documents from our local machine to BIM collaborate mm -hmm. you know BIM 360 platform, mm -hmm. and we <clears throat> collaborated because what we understand is that. You are already about that. ESRI RGO Geo BIM is a, is a collaboration between the Autodesk platform to ESRI. So using that, uh, you know, BIM Collaborate Pro, and we push the document from BIM 360 BIM Collaborate Pro to RGO Geo BIM, mm -hmm. where you can able to pull your locational drawings and location mm -hmm. data that we can publish on top of uh, on RGO Geo BIM uh, mapping uh, platform. So here, Regarding the data security, since we registered on uh, BIM Collaborate, um, it is it's prompting the, you know, we cannot straight away go, like you have to provide my username and password. And also sometimes it's prompting me to give the SMS, you know, text information, something. So mm -hmm. my yeah. confidential data is transforming between uh, BIM 360, BIM Collaborate to, um, you know, like RGOG or BIM. So I, I did not find that there's any issue between, uh, uh, you know, uh, Autodesk co Collaborate Pro to RGOGO BIM because we posted a lot of uh, Revit models and as well as we also provided uh, their 4D visualization in terms of the cost and constructions also. Their uh, widget and all we transferred from there and we could able to show, uh, you know, the time series analysis as well as uh, the construction cost of that particular location of the building. And as well as mm -hmm. we shown the Revit models and uh, uh, <clears throat> In the in the in the same screen in our GeoGBM platform, we can show the math layers as well. At the same time, okay. if you click on that any object, the respective location of the object you can view straight away on the right side screen on the GeoBIM where we mm -hmm. collaborated, you know, they can push the documents there and we can see the drawings. Uh, for instance, Lee, I have drawn in uh, measured the uh, measured one distance of one main gate, for example, we did for pilot. So we, 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 we draw a line and we see what exactly the length and the dimension of the, the, the main gate. The same dimensions we could be able to see on the on the, on the RTO GeoBIM platform on the map. So what I'm trying to say, the whole scenario mm -hmm. looks like I did not find any data security concerns. Can you please elaborate more, Mr. Sorn? So I understand that you are uh, pushing data from BIM 360 to, to RGIS, right? Is that correct? RGIS GeoBIM, yes. Yes. Okay, yes, and, do. and how do yes. you do that? You you using a uh, what kind of method? Yeah. Exactly. Because so in RGO Geo, in RGO Geo BIM, because there's a there's a collaboration between RGO Geo BIM and as well as uh, you know BIM 360. As I said, it's a plat. It's a, it's a it's a it's a what do you call the collaboration from E3 platform to RGO. So correct. When we when we click any object in RGO Geo platform on the map, it immediately prompting. To provide that username and password of the BIM 360. So Correct. when I put that, when I connect that, then immediately it's pointing out to the BIM 360 platform, and from there it's pulling all the documents where we can able to show in the RGO platform. Yes. Correct. So it's it's a really it's a it's, it's very interesting. That's what I'm trying to say. So it's a more data security, though it's a private cloud, uh, as you said. But yes. but I personally believe that uh, without giving any you know the, the the username and password and as well as what you call in terms of the text information, even we got it through to, to my email, email, my mobile as well, since I registered my mobile. So it's taking yes. from the system level and as well as, you know, from from my machine level. So. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Th
Yes, yes, very, very good so, point. Actually, you're right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I, I, I think you made some some very good points. So one that I can I can you know resume is that these platforms Ex have exactly integrations. What you, exactly what you exactly what you are showing on the on the screen. Exactly. Yes, we did the same thing because if you look at that, sir, you can see that RGSO Pro. Exactly. See, this is an ESRI platform and RGSO Pro. So my C layers are there in this RGS Pro. And this RGS Pro is with inside the you know BIM 360 platform, so um, yeah. so that uh, it's pointing out. So uh, all the it has come with uh, leverages of uh, what do you call the uh, the the BIM 360 documents, the RGS uh, map, RGS Pro. That's an history platform. It's been inside the uh, BIM 360 platform. Exactly what you are showing. Exactly yes. Here here only we registered and we given that BIM 360. We send. We have the password and it's connecting. And giving that email ID, and as well as it is also prompting me to prove the text information from my mobile as well. Yes, we did correct. That. Yes. So I believe that Good is point. a data security, uh, Mr. Yeah, Sorry. I will. I will actually post this as well. So we are complying with the uh, international standards for for security. Yeah. So the same standard, exactly. you know, that the banks are are using. So when you you use your credit card or you know they have to comply to some security uh, international standards. So we are following the same kind of uh, standards of security for for data, and our yeah. data is it's powered by Amazon Web Services, so it's it's the world uh, leader in cloud infrastructure. Um, exactly. So I, I will I will just post this as well. Uh, if anyone on the call is is curious about uh, the standards and and how it works and and all the certifications that we have for our systems. Uh, okay. So okay. Any because, other questions? Uh, yeah, that's one of the sure. things. Oh, well, not two questions, yeah, uh, Mr. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sure. from Mr. Mohammed here you can see in the chat. Uh, what is the extent of which AI can benefit the honor in updating progress on site and the extent yeah. to which it needs human involvement? Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we're talking about AI since, I don't know, a few years, maybe five years, and it's a very hot topic and it's AI starts to be used everywhere around us. Like sometimes even when you go to a, uh, help uh, to an app, you know, you receive for for a food delivery, or a, you sometimes you're talking to an AI. So, it's it's becomes so widely used around us, and and the question is why don't we use it more in construction, right? So, so with this in mind, we actually started uh, uh, again. I think a few years back, three to five years back, we started to to implement AI capabilities in our ACC platform. Um, and I, I think during the presentation I was, I was mentioning about that. So it's what we call construction IQ. Okay, so one example of how to to use that, it's actually, uh, let me just pop up the slide. Um, it's built up in the uh, ACC Cloud Platform, and what it does, it's actually, you know, when when you have a a project or let's say a mega project, sometimes you're dealing with thousands and thousands of issues, thousands of thousands of data entries. So as a as a human, it's hard to navigate, you know, through that data. It can be sometimes it can be an issue, but it can be a very simple issue. Somebody I don't know was late five minutes or something like that. Or, but it can be a, a water leak, you know, that or, or or a fire hazard. Somebody re can record that in the platform. Now, artificial intelligence can help uh, prioritize these issues and can help. Uh, you know, and understands which issues have uh, high importance and it will bring them on top of that, that list and it will display them with high priority. And then you can, uh, you know, you can validate, yes, this is a high priority, uh, it's, it's, it's true, and it learns also. So it's using machine learning to, to uh, you know, uh, learn and, and to be more accurate on, on how it's, it's uh, highlighting these kind of issues. So this is just an example of... Um, of how we use artificial intelligence on our platform, but we have also other kinds of examples. We have an example also on our uh, ABC Pro. So when we're doing the, uh, the uh, clash detection, right? So when you're doing clash detection in Navisworks, sometimes you get, again, thousands and thousands of, of, uh, of clashes. And, you know, artificial intelligence is good at, at handling large amounts of data. And it's 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 learning specific patterns, and it can it can highlight patterns. So we can use it also in clash detection. So how we we use it in uh, ABC Pro in uh, uh, clash detection in the cloud, 
Yeah, it's actually a function that is grouping the clashings, clashes based on similar uh, patterns, let's say. So just to give you a very basic example, you have a wall, you have 10 pipes cutting through that wall. Navisworks will, tell, will show you 10 clashes and you will have to group them. So you have to do some manual work. Uh, if you do that clash in the cloud in Autodesk Beam Collaborate Pro, the clashes will be automatically grouped. So it's reducing that time, uh, you know, that you spend on manual tasks trying to figure out large amounts of data. And if you're talking about, let's say, 2,000, 3,000 clashes, if you have a system that pre-groups all these clashes automatically, it's also another uh, way of using artificial intelligence. So that's, and the potentials are enormous. You know, it's uh, we our Forge platform, which drives basically. Uh, ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, or, or Beam360, uh, it's built on Forge. Okay, so Forge is, I, just, I give this analogy, is like the, the Android or the iOS in which uh, Beam360 or ACC, Autodesk Construction Cloud, is, is written. And it's an open platform. So you or a third-party developer, uh, there are specialist companies all over the world that you can engage and they, they can develop AI applications uh, that you can you can think of. So you have an idea, okay? Why we have these tasks that we are we waste a lot of time by doing these manual tasks. Uh, you can you know engage with some some uh, a software developer uh, that can build some automation on on Forge. And currently we have uh, more than 100 uh, apps which were built like that, and they are monetized. So users can also so it's 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 a similar concept like an app store. Uh, you know, and and you can sell those apps to to other people as well. So this this is just a let's say a a quick uh, overview of of how things can can be done with artificial intelligence. So very good question. Yeah. Okay, I think we are a bit over the time, but maybe we can take one more question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Khalid. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can ask your question now. Uh, okay. Please. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sorin, for your fruitful uh, presentation. Highly appreciated. Obviously, AAC industry is growing like never before. And, oh, and as you mentioned correctly, that today we believe that BIM has reshaped the industry. Can you please uh, share some of the challenges and opportunities that uh, the newcomers might benefit from? Challenges? Okay. And opportunities. Yes. yes. Okay. That's. Thank you for the because question. Very good. All, yeah. all, obviously, people are always reluctant when something new comes to the market. They are always reluctant to go for the how to manage the change and uh, uh, capitalize on 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 the on, the, on this the disrupting uh, technology. Thank you. Sure, very much. Very, so thank you for the for the good question. Um, actually, you know, this is a common common question for for any company that is, uh, is is on this process of digitization and we started this maybe 15 years ago when there were the beginnings of of beam and and there were just a handful of companies that you know started to adopt this kind of technology at that time they were they, they seemed revolutionary and everything but now after 15 years fast forward you know it starts to become the the standard and as you mentioned yes there's a lot of uh, reluctance, um, and I, I think the challenge is, is, is it's it's the sometimes the lack of skill, sometimes it's scare. It's we are afraid of of new things, which is a normal human uh, trait or a character a characteristic. I, I still remember first time I opened AutoCAD uh, I, when I was in my university years. It was just a, a black screen with a lot of icons there and it seems so you know complicated and and difficult and i was thinking wow i don't know how much time i i'll need to use it but then after i i learned it uh, it became second nature so in my first uh, and i was lucky in a way to you know to to not be not use the the drawing boards <laughs> in, in that sense uh so autocad became like uh, now it's you know, if you're in the, in the engineering and construction world, it's it's like a must. It's like the alphabet. Um, so it's the same thing with with BIM, but it, it requires a bit more uh, higher skills than a CAD user. Okay, so for CAD, you just 
you don't have to think so much. You know, you just draw lines sometimes or cat drafter. Uh, but if you're if you're moving into Beam, you need to have a bit of more understanding of of how the the construction process works, how the design first, how the design works, how the construction will be built. So you have to think also of of more than just you know drawing lines. So I think this can be uh, you know addressed with uh, education. Um, so it's uh, it's not just uh, purchasing a new software and okay, expecting that the results will come immediately. Um, it's not, uh, and usually, you know, uh, how how we notice this, uh, we have a few champions in in these companies. So there are a few people who know or have used the project, the product before, and then they can teach the others, and then they can you know help help the others become comfortable and on how to to use the tool. It's also, you know, another approach is to start with a, maybe a smaller project just to understand the process. So it can be a learning exercise and then deploying it on, on larger projects uh, and then becoming more comfortable. So it's always, uh, you know, uh, BIM, it's it's about the, the three pillars. Uh, it's the, the people, processes and technology. So technology, I, I put it the last, and and for technology, you can always come to us. You know, as I as I mentioned during my presentation, we are the leading uh, in the in the beam industry, but we also have a lot of knowledge that we can share. So it's, we we're not just software vendors. Um, we also have a lot of um, knowledge, and we have our network of partners. You know, that can support your journey. So you're not alone. That's that's the message. Um, you you have our help uh, on that. Yes, sorry. Now I will add one point here. Like you know, if you have like long answers, maybe we can share with the attendees later. And only one question I will take, and then we can wind up. I guess Mr. Sure. Naresh is asking, uh, do you advise us to go with ESRI platform or with Autodesk platform for di for digital transformation? So maybe you can. Yeah. Can you... so, yeah. Again, sorry. Probably I uh, <laughs> I took a bit more time to answer the question, but I think the, the you know the question was so um, deep, I would say, and 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 and, and so yes. so common that I think I needed a bit more time. So apologies for that. Uh, yeah. Regarding the platform, uh, you know, it depends on 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 the need. You know, uh, Esri uh, is is more for the GIS infrastructure kind of uh, uh, workflows. Um, so I, uh, th there's no uh, answer of which one is the best or which one is good. Uh, it's it's on what application you are using it for. So my suggestion is just uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud should be, you know, your common data environment. It should be your your default uh, platform for for digitization. But you can use also other platforms, you know, because there are integrations between them. So they are integrated, and so you can use uh, multiple kind of, of platforms. So as I mentioned before, I know digital transformation uh, uh, is, is is a journey. Um, yeah. The earlier you start, you know, the better. Um, don't don't yeah. be left behind because in the future, you know, everything uh, will be digital, and companies that have are are, are not doing this move. They they will have they will struggle, yes, um, yes. and you know please reach out to to us to our uh, partners and we are more than happy to be uh, to help you uh, with this, and that's it from my side. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, with that note, we will also wind up the session today. Abu Bashir actually he uh, lost his connection somehow, so so I'm winding up here and thank you so much for attending our webinar today. And let's meet in you know this is the series and just the beginning of that. So hopefully we will do like you know a lot of other informative sessions in the future. So and I request all of you to join for them. And thank you once again. Thank you very much on behalf of Micro Center. Thank you, Sorin. Thank you, Aisha. Thank you all. Thank you for having Thank me you. and have a good day. Bye bye. Have a good day, yeah. all of you. Yeah. Thank you very much.